Sagittarius, it's me Stormy and here's your 2018 yearly horoscope. So before we jump off into this horoscope breakdown, I want to let you know the 2018 birthday appointments are up. Click in the description box down below. Book your birthday by your sun sign. It's my once a year gift to you guys. Lots of changes coming this year for Stormy Gray, so I wanted to make sure I got the birthday appointments in there for sure. So grab yours before those appointments are gone, okay? All right, Sagittarius. So Jupiter is going to be moving into Sagittarius, which is your sign, obviously, but we don't get all of that abundance delicious until the end of the year. So we better talk about what's happening first. <laughs> now, as we come into 2018, one of the things is you're a very bright, optimistic, busy, adventure kind of sign. But with Jupiter in Scorpio, this is actually in the placement of your 12th house. So this is a much more quiet space of life, right? This is much more quiet behind the scenes department. So one of the things, because Jupiter is about luck and abundance and wisdom and opportunities, and you are a natural adventurer, even in the quietest spaces of your chart, one of the things I think for many of you is that you will be developing your psychic talents this year. I really do. I think so many of you are actually going to have the opportunity where that sixth house third eye light is really coming on and you are working on that you may require more meditation more quiet time more downtime this year where you're not having to be so in the limelight about everything because you're really developing something that's quieter that has some firm foundation to it at the same time if you are a student or a researcher or something like that this energy is on fleek for you because the 12th house supports research, getting to what is hidden, right? Getting to the things that are behind the scenes. So this is a wonderful energy for you to be researching. Now, we've also got Saturn in Capricorn. Now, Saturn in Capricorn for you sits in your second house. So what that indicates to me about Jupiter in your 12th house is that you may also be working on a project or a plan, or a design, or a concept, or something that you're keeping quiet, you're still developing it, you're still working on it, you're still getting it ready to put out there. Maybe you're even a little bit afraid to put it out there because you're not sure how it's gonna go, so you're still just milling it over, something like that, right? That's all happening in that 12th house space as well, getting prepared at the end of the year to launch this something out there and share it with the world, which is an absolute lean in and good use of Saturn and Capricorn for you. Because Saturn and Capricorn is going to be about you creating new structure around your money, around your finances, right? Capricorn wants to achieve, so you better bet that this may be the year where you cut it back. You cut those finances back. You cut that spending back, right? You really get serious about a budget, but you may be developing a project or something like that, even internal peace over here. And you go, I have to come into alignment with my money if I'm going to make these things happen. Now, with having Saturn here over the next approximately three years in this second house area of your chart, I also think this gives way. The second house is about your value, your esteem your talents, right? It's not just material possessions and money, but your talent. You may be starting to really refine and see your talents as they relate to what you're developing and what you're ready to put out there. Because these talents will be how you end up changing your income, how you end up changing the way you make money, how you feel about you. All of these things with Saturn here in Capricorn are up for evaluation, but they've got a much more serious feel to them because it's in Capricorn energy. Now the real benefit I think comes to the table is that you've had Saturn in your sign for like ever and it just got off of you, right? So you are bringing a more mature, more serious, more spiritually mature version of yourself to the table. So these changes, they may just be coming right in line where you're like, man, I'm trying to be a different version of myself. I've got to develop these things and I've got to come into alignment here. So it all seems like a very seamless process. Now that does not mean that Saturn is any easier, but it is working towards your greatest good until 2020. And I do feel like too, there's this air around this of just developing a psychic talent or a psychic heart level gift that you have to give away. Now, the other thing that it looks like um, as I consider it, someone in your life, whether this be a child or you, or a sibling, right, could be having some really big event this year. A wedding, a birth, going to college, whatever it is. 
you will have a financial part in it. And I think that this is also helping you see why you gotta get your money life together so that you're able to suit up, be responsible for, pay for, and also have some financial serenity this year as well. Now, what else I love about your money situation is that we've also got Uranus making a move out of Aries into the sign of Taurus. Uranus in Taurus for you is gonna hit this space of the sixth house. Now, Uranus is great for unexpected out of nowhere, immediate beginnings, immediate endings, right? So this energy snaps you out of a rut, brings new energy into your life, breaks the structures that you had. So be prepared. The sixth house is about work, health, routines, service, those kinds of things, jobs, job skills. Maybe you see a skill that you need to bring to the table. Maybe you see that you already have the skill that you need and you haven't been bringing it to the table, right? You could be getting prepared to have a step up here. But at the same time, what I feel like Uranus brings between May and November, while we're getting this little taste of Uranus being in Taurus is that your routine around work could change, right? You could have a new job. You could have a new job routine. You could have a new daily schedule. If you welcomed a new person into your life this year, your schedule in that sense and your routine could be changing. And I do think for some of you, this will just be a time between May and November where you actually take a job change all the way around. If you're a freelance person, you could find jobs coming out of nowhere. Right? If you're a freelance person, you could find jobs leaving out of nowhere, but there's a lot of opportunity for new beginning. And also innovation to whatever it is you're doing around work. Innovation to around whatever you're doing for health. Have you been trying the same old thing? Yes, maybe you are doing as much yoga as one person can handle and you are eating the cleanest food on the planet. Maybe you find out you actually need to get a little bit more fat in your diet because you have to find an alternative way of looking at what you're already doing if what you're doing is not working and producing serenity. Clean doesn't mean it's the only way. There is not one way. And Uranus will tell you, will show you that there's another way that maybe you need to consider. But this is all great news for your, your serenity and your finances as well when we're working with the sixth house. Now, we've also got planets taking a retrograde, most specifically Mars and Venus. So Mars is gonna be retrograde from June 26th all the way until August 27th. Now, when I'm looking at this energy for you here, one of the things I'm thinking is, is something needs to be redone because that's what we do in a retrograde. We redo, we relook at, rethink, re-edit, revise. Mars is about action and energy and desire and movement, right? So this being in the third house space for you, one thing you have to keep in mind is that Mars is also about conflict, whether he's forward or backwards. He is about conflict. So if you've been working on someone, talking to a sibling, um, talking to neighbors, trying to work on a contract, something like that, watch your mouth. Just watch your mouth. You do not want to have something come out of your mouth that creates a conflict that you don't need because you weren't thinking before you spoke. Now, another thing, though, is if you are a writer, um, maybe your website, these things are going to need relooking, revising, re-editing. And it could really be, too, something with a sibling or a neighbor. Maybe something's coming to hash, coming to pass, or something like that. This is a time where, in a retrograde, you get to look back and also see where you are or are not showing up in your life. Where are you showing up for people? Where are you not showing up for people? Where are you showing up at work? Where are you not showing up? Do you have that website? And yeah, you have it, but you haven't done anything with it. It'll be a great time for you to evaluate those things as well well. Now Venus, when she takes her retrograde, she's going to start out, first of all, in the sign of Scorpio. So in this very 12th house zone for you, when Venus is retrograde, relationships and finances can come under a little bit of a pinch. They can get tight, but it is again about a revision, right? In this 12th house space, I think one of the things you may be looking at is where's your self-care? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you listening, speaking, feeling your own heart and your own essence vibrate, right? In a project that you're working on, do you need to look at bringing some more harmony to that, right? Do you need to relook at the financials around something over there? Then Venus, as she is retrograding, is going to slip back into the sign of Libra. So this is your 11th house. This is great. A friendship might be under reevaluation. Groups, associations, memberships. Maybe you're like, I don't even like this gym. I need to be at that gym over there. Maybe you do need to be at that gym over there because it actually costs less and you're on a budget, right? <laughs> so these things could be coming up. You could also be re-looking re at where you are or are not bringing harmony and beauty to the internet. 
You know, what are you doing out in the social space? The 11th house is very, very social, and Venus is going to give you an opportunity to relook at those areas. Now, as we get ready to end this beautiful year, Jupiter is going to move into your sign. It's home. It's like, welcome home, my favorite sign, or my favorite planet, excuse me. And this is a comfortable energy for you. All of this 12th house work that you've been doing, right? All of this abundance, because Jupiter's bringing you the opportunities to work on this thing behind the scenes. You're getting ready to pop it out as we get ready for 2019. So it is going to be a time, it is going to be a year of development for you as sh for sure. It doesn't mean it's not going to be a little bit of a heavy year, but it does mean it's a year where you can survive and make a lot of really good changes. And when you make these changes, it's about you being like, yeah, I'm empowered and I own my life. I know where my money is going. I know where I'm showing up. I know where I'm not. I know where I can grow and where I need to change, but I own it. And that is a way you wanna leave a year for sure. All right, Sag, let's break this year down by date. January 31st, we start our first um, taste of the eclipse season. Now, this eclipse season is very much so like the one of 2017 in that we are dealing with um, Leo and Aquarian energies, right? Now, this eclipse cycle, while it feels a little bit similar to 2017, it's actually connected to a cycle that began in 2016. So I would ask you, review, look at, what were you doing then? What were you trying to develop? What was going on for you, right? And let's see where it lines up with the things that are happening now. Now, this happening on January 31st is a total lunar eclipse in the sign of Leo. And it's important to understand that it's a total because it's going to be a blotting out, which resets our emotions. So for you in this ninth house space of faith, right? You're a new person, Sag. You've got a new level of maturity you're bringing to the table. What level, what, what kind of leaps are you going to take this year, right? The ninth house is about faith. It's also about expansion. How are you going to get yourself out there? Publishing, broadcasting, advertising, podcasting, whatever ways you can to be putting yourself out there, you may be working that angle a little bit. You could also, because you're working so much in this 12th house quiet space, be gaining education, Right, new skills, new licensing, new certification, new higher education. Maybe you're getting ready to teach or something like that, right? This energy is gonna be helping you to see where you need to reset there because it's still the full moon and the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged or adjusted. So you're gonna be looking at those things right here with a reset to how you actually feel about these things. Maybe you're like, I don't actually even like this program of study. Why am I studying this? And you decide to do something else, okay. February 15th, we've got a solar eclipse, and this is happening in Aquarius. So this is your third house, giving some energy, new beginnings, new projects, new communications, new thinking patterns, new opportunities for mental health, right? New conversation with siblings, neighbors. This is a really wonderful energy actually to be re-looking at and signing contracts if you need to do something like that because this is the new moon, so new beginnings happening right here. May 15th, we've got Uranus moving into Taurus all the way until November 6th, giving some light and some love to the sixth house. So the work thing, we're going to have this taste. And then on November 6th, what's going to happen is Uranus is going to retrograde, move back into Aries, right? So it's going to be here until 2019. Then Uranus is going to come back forward into Taurus. And then we get a long stent of Uranus in Taurus about seven years. From June 26th to August 27th, we've got that Mars retrograde. Now, during a Mars retrograde, I really heavily suggest if you can avoid doing elective surgeries, please do that. If you can't, you do what you need to do, okay? July 13th, we've got a partial solar eclipse, and this one is actually in the sign of Cancer. How delightful, right? That is really good, good-ish. This could be an influx of something coming from a partner's money or coming from sources that you didn't necessarily earn those funds from. July 27th, we've got a total lunar eclipse. This is again in the third house. So you're re-looking at communications. Maybe you're re-looking at a project again. Maybe you're re-looking at your own mental health again. These are the things that you will be working on during this time frame, though. What new action needs to occur? August 11th, we've got a partial solar eclipse in Leo. So this is again over here in this ninth house space. You could be starting a new certification, be starting a new teaching thing. Maybe you've reached tenure, right? Something like that's going to be happening around this ninth house. Maybe you are ready for some, not just domestic, but foreign travel to get out there, to get a something out there and connect in some way, shape or form. But this is definitely the energy of taking big leaps of doing some things differently. 
October 5th through November 6th is when we're going to see that Venus retrograde starting in Scorpio, then moving back through Libra in the 11th house before it moves on and starts going forward again in November. Then as we end the year, November 8th is the day, da, 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 Jupiter moves into Scorpio It moves into Sagittarius in your sign. We've got the opportunity to start having opportunities for you to get yourself out in the world, get what you've been developing out in the world in a different way and start to bring some different abundance and wisdom and blessings into your life. And definitely, usually from the first house space, something connected to some finances as well. All right, Sagittarius, I look forward to walking with you every week and every month of 2018, growing with you all year long and definitely seeing you in the one-on-one -on -one birthday appointments. So click below and make sure you snag that. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Bye.